I wanted to, uh, instead of engaging uh, the heavenly realm like we normally do, I, I want to do it a little different tonight and, and uh, engage uh, the kingdom of God within. And uh, we're going to start with the cherubim that set over the Ark of the Covenant that's within us. And as each one of us has, has an Ark of a Covenant within us, you know, because the Father lives in, within us, but he also, we, we're also one new man in the ascension. So we're going to address the uh, Ark of the Covenant in the one new man, and, and it will spread out to each one of us individually. So just... Uh, as we engage, just talk, let us know what you're seeing, feeling, and hearing, trust, you know, thinking about. And uh, please don't hold back. Go ahead. If you get something, even if you don't understand what it means, just if you feel like you're, you've got something, please share it because you may have the missing piece for somebody else. And so don't don't hold back. Just uh, go ahead and spit it out there and let's let's just... We may may or may not do anything with it. So, uh, but eventually we will. Before it's over with, it'll come back up so that yeah. we can and get. Yeah, go, so, I'm sorry. I was going to oh, say, yeah. and, and we, you know, do your best, guys, just to stay together. Try not to drift off. Sometimes we find ourselves in another spot. It just happens. But as a general rule, you kind of want to stick with the group. Yeah. So as we uh, just give thanks tonight, Father, as we come before you, we just want to engage with the uh, cherubim that set over the Ark of the Covenant that's within each one of us, that's within the, the body of Christ. And as we engage with that body of Christ, with those cherubim, Father, we approach the mercy seat on humble Humble, completely humbled on our on bended knee, Father. We come to uh, engage with you, to seek your face, to uh, call upon your name. And Father, as we just as we uh, enter into this place, we just arc with the uh, angelic that's over the mercy seat. And we just want to just lay down any and all uh, preconceived ideas that we've got, anything, any baggage that we've brought in from the day, we just lay that down before you tonight, Father. Any any uh, thoughts of how this should work or where we're going, we just lay those at your feet tonight, and we just invite you and your angels to guide us and teach us and instruct us and lead us to the place that you'd have us go. So, Father, we, we just humbly come before you tonight with um, awe in our hearts, with, with burning desire to engage with you and to engage with your angelic realm. And, Father, as we enter into this place where you dwell within us, we just give thanks and praise, Father, as we go past the veil into the most holy place where you dwell. You know, um, I, I heard, like Dan had, had been talking about, as soon as you stopped um, your prayer, Bucky, as soon as it finished, I heard like the, the sound of uh, big angel wings. Oh, wow. Big ones. I mean, you know, you can, you know, they're big. They weren't going fast, but they were very big. <laughs> All right. All right. Cool. So we welcome you. We welcome you.
Yes. Thank you. Keep hearing this dinging, like like you know the, the high priest when he'd enter into the into the most holy place, he always wore a bell. I'm hearing a ding as as like the little bell that would be on the end of his garment. And so, as soon as you finish saying that, all of a sudden, my my wind chimes that sound like bells started ringing outside. <laughs> that was a sign. <laughs> Can't make this stuff up. I'm reminded of the scripture in Revelation that talks about um, the angels that fly around the throne day and night saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who is and was and is to come. And um, I've, I've told some of y'all before, but I asked the Lord one day, what was just one thing? Could he tell me just one thing that the angels saw as he went around, as they went around the throne of God? You know, what what was just one thing that they saw? And he, he his word to me was you. You? So he you. saw they saw you. They saw you. Wow. Wow. That's powerful. That is pretty powerful. <laughs> they didn't only see me, but they saw each one of you on one of their trips around. Oh, wow. Um, okay. Well, I'm earlier today in my prayer time uh, with the Lord, um, what we're doing now um I saw massive wings, massive uh, behind the throne, and um, like wings of light. It was huge. It was massive, and I saw that I was like sitting there on the throne, and these wings were behind me. So when you said that, I felt that it was key to finally share what he had showed me earlier. It, it's it's just total confirmation. Wow. <laughs> but you know that's that's exactly right because you are sitting on his throne because he's in you and he's yes. and you're in. You. Yes, so, that's what he was showing me. That's that's exactly where I wanted to go tonight. Is is to that place where we realize that. God is not on the outside of us. He is inside of us. And we, yes. we times we've been taught in, in the church at large that, that Jesus is outside of us, that we're looking for him in another place. And we don't have to look for him any place but within ourselves because he's given us everything for life and godliness and everything that we need. No, we lack nothing anymore. We, we fail to see it, though, because we can't perceive that. We can't wrap our heads around that. Right. I, I really wish I can like, I, 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 the way I shared it gave the vision no justice whatsoever, but it was, we were within him and we were seated on the throne and these massive wings, like it was, like it had no end. It was, was raised behind, behind the throne, like covering us, whoever, you know, it could be me, you, but that's, that's how that's how I um, I saw it. It was absolutely amazing. It's exactly what we're doing tonight. Isn't that yeah. something? That's so encouraging, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Uh, you got you a, pre a preview. The Lord does yes. it a lot of times when we do these ascensions. He gives us previews. Yeah. And, and 
takes us and shows us things before we get there. <laughs> it's pretty. It's pretty awesome. Dion, um, you had your hand raised. You can jump in. You don't need to raise your hand. Uh, um, I saw like um, where I kind of saw like um, where I, I saw like a throne. And I saw like myself like in God. And it was like, and it was like angels were kind of showing me um, what life actually looks like in God. And how they actually see, how they actually see us actually enthroned in God. And um, yeah, it's like uh, it's like um all I can sense was just uh Angelic, all I can sense is just angelic presence is all even around the throne, but not even just that. I can sense like the I can sense like the angels have been aware of who we are, have been are aware of who we are since we've come into existence. That these angels are aware of what we possess and what we can do. So it's like it's like now it's like you're showing me that. The life that we have actually in him. You know, Neon, that makes me think of that scripture in what is it, first Peter that says says that um oh, I just lost <laughs> <laughs> you're getting in the zone. He <laughs> uh, said he says um that it was revealed to the prophets of old that the things that they that they learned were and, and were given were not for them alone, but it's for them that came after them. And then it says that angels long to look into these things. And and that's exactly right, because the angels don't have what we have. They can't do what we do. A lot of times we can't do what they do, but you know, the point is is that we we are the chosen. We are the we are the ones that the angels long to to look into and, and understand about us and it's it's not a it's not I'm not saying that to build ourselves up as something that we're not but it's something that you know most of us don't understand the importance of who we are in in the whole kingdom process we're not just flunkies you know that's sitting here waiting you know, for the by and by to come so we can catch our first, you know, trip to heaven and on the cloud and live forever in the by and by, you know. We're <laughs> we're here for a purpose, and that's we're here to become sons of God and to be revealed in the earth. And we have to start recognizing who we are and the power that we carry and that we walk in. We can't just sit by and idly keep going back into Christian gnome and, and bringing up old stuff, we have to step up and step out and step into the things that God's called us to. You know, uh, Hebrews 6 keeps telling us over and over to stop laying again those foundations. I'm, I don't, I am getting a little off track of what you were talking about, but um, it's, it's just we've got to begin to realize, you know, even in, in Ephesians chapter 4, you know, it says that God created the that He gave us apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists for the perfecting of the saints. But then He has this one little word in there. It says, "Until we reach the fullness of of who we are." And the thing is, is that it seems like the church tends to think that the apostles, prophets, pastors, and teachers are there, and that's that's the ultimate goal. But that that is laying again those foundations that once you step into sonship, you start to move into the higher realms with, with the Father and you step into sonship, you begin to realize who you are and what you are and the authority that you carry in the kingdom of God. I hope, I hope that made some kind of sense. It did to me. I'm, I'm going to try to look up that, that scripture. Which one? The one about the angels yearn to look into these, 
How, how is it? Oh, yeah. it's first Peter one or two. Yeah, I think it's first Peter one, kind of towards the end of the chapter. Okay. I know they look forward to helping us out. And um, uh, yeah, first Peter one twelve. So I'll read it. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but us. When they spoke of the things that have now been told you by those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit since, sent from heaven, even angels long to look into these things. What version is that, Jill? Um, this is the NIV, but I bet I bet it would be awesome in the mirror. Do you have the mirror Bible? I do. If I can find it here, let's see. What's the verse again? Uh, first, first Peter, Peter 1, verse 12. Uh, starting in verse 1, 11, it says, In all of their conversation, there was a constant quest to determine who the Messiah would be and exactly when this will happen. They knew with certainty that it was the spirit of Christ within them pointing prophetically and giving testimony to the sufferings of, of the Christ and the subsequent glory. Whatever glory was lost in Adam would be redeemed again in Jesus. That's uh, his little note there. And in verse 12, it was revealed to them that this glorious grace message that they were communicating pointed to a specific day and person beyond their own horizon and generation. They saw, they saw you in their prophetic views. This heavenly announcement had, had you in mind all along. They proclaimed glad tidings to you in advance in the Holy Spirit commissioned from heaven. The angel angelic messengers themselves long to gaze deeply into the, its complete fulfillment. Love that. Yeah. Yeah. The angels do long to be with us, and they are every All step of the way. That's it. You know, we've heard we've heard testimony from who is it, like Bill Johnson and Bobby Connors that talks about. Uh, Bill Johnson tells about this this person in their church that had lost their. Uh, thesis paper they were writing for their for their master's degree or their doctorate I can't remember what it was but they had they had lost their computer like it was stolen from a bus stop or something like that I don't remember the total details but the, the computer came up missing and uh, anyway so they uh, just started engaging the Lord and, and asking the angels to return their computer and uh, so they finally ended up going and buying a brand new computer from the store. And when they opened it up and, you know, got everything started on it, 
they opened up their word program and there was their thesis was on that brand new computer. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Bobby Connor talks about when he, when he uh, was engaging with heaven, he, he had lost his pocket knife in a hotel room and uh, he was uh he was really frustrated over losing the pocket knife. I think it was a gift or something. And he just, he said, he just screamed out, I want my knife back. And a cloud materialized over the bed and the knife dropped out of the, out of the <laughs> cloud onto the bed. Like Dion's wallet. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. Now this week, my mom heard a knock at the door. And she asked me to go open it. And I didn't hear anything. I was in the kitchen, nothing. You know, it's just a TV. But I went and opened it. And there was a feather right in front of the door. Yep. So I, I, yeah. So I gave it to my mom. I must have been an angel. I have a feeling I'll, show, I'll send you all the picture tonight when I walk outside because I'll walk outside and there'll be another one laying in the, in the ground. So I'll take a picture of it and send it to you. I just have a feeling that's going to happen. <laughs> I've, got, I've got feathers in my Bible where, in fact, let's see. <laughs> It's not in this Bible. Okay. It's in the other one. So, <laughs> anyway, okay. But, you know, I was thinking of too about um, who's on here tonight. I don't want to tell the story a hundred times, but I'll tell it to most of y'all. I don't think have maybe heard this story, but. There was a, a I, I drive all over the state of Texas and, and work. I do environmental cleanup stuff. So I'm driving all over the state. And anyway, one day I was down in kind of south of where I live, about three hours south of here, which is getting pretty close to Mexico. And uh, there's a ranch down there called the Rocker B. And the Rocker B just happens to be owned by the, by the Masons. And uh, um, when I got on that ranch, I, I really just began to, I, the whole way down there, I'm just praying and worshiping and listening to scripture, you know, just preaching, whatever, you know. That's what I do most of the time while I'm driving. And uh, anyway, when I got onto that, onto that ranch, um, I saw this uh, in the spirit realm. I, I just knew that there was some angels around me and I couldn't, I couldn't really tell much about him, but, but I could tell that there was one and it, I felt like he was really bound up. So I started praying and the more I prayed, the more I began to see him and understand that he was, he was actually in chains. He, he was gagged. He had chains around his wrist, chains around his feet. He was laying down. He couldn't get up. And uh, he actually had guards over him. And the Lord actually prompted me at that time to uh, call upon uh, the angel that walks over Texas, which would be Lone Star. And I, I called on Lone Star to come and help and bring other angels to, to enter into this encounter with me. And anyway, we, we kept, I kept praying and praying and, we finally got this angel on his feet and got the chains off of him. And uh, it took several weeks before I figured out what his name was, but it, it turned out that his name is actually Depth Charge. And that his purpose is he goes around and he blows stuff up for the kingdom of God. <laughs> so he hangs around with me a lot. And uh, so if you ever need something blown up in the kingdom, just... Let me know, and we'll we'll uh, 
release him to go about and do his thing. He might even he might even be here with us tonight. So we can just welcome him and thank him and y'all can engage with him if you want to. He's a he's a pretty neat guy. Is that is that depth charge? Yep. Okay. Yeah, he goes way down deep and he blows stuff up way underneath, you know, to break them loose so that they but he was actually a prisoner on a on a Masonic uh, ranch. Wow. The an the angel? Yes. Oh wow. We got him we got him released and set free and Anyway, yeah, it was a it was a pretty incredible experience. So. Wow! I I also forgot to share with you all uh, when the vision I had earlier, um, when when those wings spanned out, the the whole earth shook. I felt the shaking of the whole earth, and but we were like unmovable, unshakable, and. Like you, you could just sense the the, you know, um, God's protection around us. Like like nothing was coming in, nothing could touch us. It was amazing. Wow, that's good. So, does anybody have any needs tonight that we need to invite the angels to come and help us with tonight? That's a good yes. Okay. Um, I need a vehicle. Okay. Let's start there. <laughs> so we'll just invite the angels to come and come and help us, but we're gonna change the way that we we pray a little bit and, and yes. I've been been sharing um, some of the stuff from this guy and Mike off of it. I don't know if you've gotten to watch any of his videos or not, but he teaches a, a different kind of a different way of praying. And I'd really like to just engage with that and engage with the angelic in that. But instead of being that father lives within us, that the kingdom of God, everything that we need, everything that we have desire of is, is able to be released from within us. And so as we just release the angelic, we're going to just begin to see you with a, with a new car. And do you have a particular type of car that you want or a color? Or I mean, more specific is, is good. Um, well, for the past few years, it's been a 2021 Honda Pilot Elite. Um, and I've been calling in my vehicle to come to me for the past okay. few days now. <laughs> yes. Honda I would Elite. thank King Miller for it. Honda Pilot 2021 Honda Pilot Elite. Okay. Honda Pilot Elite 2021. Okay. Yes. The so, black edition. The black <laughs> edition. Okay. So that's to I want be you specific. To, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> I want you to, to just begin to see yourself in that car as if you have it right now. And as you see it, I want you to begin to feel that emotion of having it because it's the creativity of God that's within you that's going to begin to release that. The angels are going to go about and do, we're not going to, we're not going to look at how he's going to do it. We're not going to look at, you know, what method he's going to use to bring it to you. We're just going to begin to, everybody just focus in and see, um, uh, let me see. Uh, you told me your name is Jen. 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 Yep. But, uh, everybody just look and see Jen in this uh, 2021 Honda Pilot Elite, a black one, as she's driving down the road and enjoying this new car. So I want you just to see yourself, Jen, in that car, driving happy praising God for the victory that you've gotten it as if you already have it right this minute. So everybody just, I want everybody just to look and see her in that as if she's in it right now. 
and tell her, I want you to tell her about it. How do you see her? Where do you see her at? I, Jen, I, I see one like the freeway or actually it's a country highway. And I, I just, I see you driving and you have your beautiful smile. You are just smiling away, driving yeah. away. Yeah. Just having a, you know, you're, uh, yeah, you're in a, you're, you're in a, a joy realm. <laughs> I hear the music coming from the car, and it's it's just it's it's a worship music just coming from the car, just giving praise and thanks to the Lord, to the angels for going and making this come about. Devin, Robert, Karen, y'all y'all see anything? Maggie, do you see? Any? I am feeling I saw this something bliss. Just... I'm sorry. Go, Go ahead, ahead Robert. <laughs> uh, okay, I saw like um, first something just forming all around her, and then I felt like um, kind of like the matrix dots that they were talking about, and it was like a strong frequency, but the frequency became so heavy and intoxicating. And the next thing you know, I saw the car form all around her and uh, she was in it. And then I could sense the, the entire atmosphere of the car, um, like the interior atmosphere of the car being just like uh, angelic, but also just... Uh, like before the throne room, just every time that she's in it. And um, then I could sense the angel in the car, riding in the car with her. And um, there's just a, uh, it's a breath of God just flowing through that car. And, and I'm just sensing something very, very, very refreshing and powerful there. Yeah, every molecule of that car is just as alive as we are. And we just call those molecules to form yes. around her. <laughs> yes, that's good. That's good. You know, um, I, Karen, did you want to share something? I, I can, I can wait until after you, uh, you share. Oh, I was just saying, I wasn't seeing anything, but I was just feeling the sense of bliss. All yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yes. so while we were um, talking, guys, right, you know, before we started recording, um, just a memory, you know, went through my mind of how I absolutely know um, I needed to sell my truck. This was back in. Uh, 2020, and um, I needed to sell my truck to buy a new truck, but, um, you know, I wasn't getting any nibbles on it, so, so um, I just, I turned to the Lord and said, um, Lord, I really need someone to buy, buy my truck, and I might have asked for an angel at that time, okay, well, I don't know if it was the same day or the next day, but I get a call from this, from this guy and um, he was very quiet, right? I mean, he didn't say much. So he came to buy the car with cash and he barely talked, right? I mean, he barely said anything. It was, he was very different, right? Very strange. I mean, he didn't act strange, but he just hardly spoke at all. Wow. Isn't that wild? So, so he buys the car, right? So, all right, that was cool. So about two weeks later, I was driving, we lived out in the country. I was driving down the street and a horse had got out on the road. And I'm, and I'm like, oh my gosh, how am I going to do this for myself? I have to get him off the road. Um, and I got out of my truck and then this other truck, is coming from the opposite direction. And it's that same angel guy. 
It's just wow. he, took, he helped me catch the horse and, and get him into a safe place. But isn't that wild? So, yeah. um, Jen, uh, it may be that the angel that helped me sell my truck, he might, he might be part of your your car purchase, <laughs> the one you want. So I just want to share that with you. Oh yeah, amen. <laughs> Take them. That, I never thought of using angels to sell something or to to acquire an object. I used to send angels out when my kids were teenagers to protect them and to make sure that they got home safely. And um, I would always see the angels coming into the house with them. And if I ever was in prayer and I sensed like they were being attacked or whatever, I would actually release angels to take care of them. Yeah. And so um, who knows what my kids were trying to do and the angels were stopping them. I am very thankful for that. <laughs> that um, yeah, I've had lots of experiences with angels. I've had an angel come in. I can tell the difference between an angel of death and a spirit of death. And I had them both in my kitchen when my daughter was really sick. And she was... Um, I don't know what it was. It was, she was shaking on the floor and I was just praying and just telling the spirit of death to leave because, and I was not ready for the angel of death to take my daughter at that time. And I wanted them both out of my house because I only wanted life, the angel of life and love in my home. And something's changed. And we were able to bring it to the hospital and it was just the potassium that had dropped that was causing this reaction on the floor. But yeah, um, it's like they came in, I saw them and I knew exactly how to pray and to change it. And I'm always been thankful for that because I've always been able to, I've been able to see them for as long as I can think of and if I see something that is in the demonic realm I will ask for more angels to help me to change it to to protect the person or whatever the circumstances is it is amazing it's something you don't normally talk to most church people because they'll kick you out of the church which (laughs) has happened several times (laughs) I mean they don't yeah, and they freak out if you talk about angels, but they'll freak out even more if you talk about the demons. But the angels, <laughs> the angels, they're not all pretty. You know, we used to think, you know, oh, the angels they just like look, look like people, and they don't. Some of them are ugly, as ugly can be. Ugly to us, right? But, but not, God makes, yeah, yeah, God makes them all. And so uh, Polly challenged us and another group that I'm in um, to connect with the spirit of the snake. And I don't like snakes. I'm actually petrified of them. But what do you know? God gives me a spirit snake called white python. And I'm not crazy about snakes. And so it took several days to actually be comfortable to even have it in the same room with me. But since I've been in California, I have it running around the outside, the perimeter of my mom's house because there's been so much sickness in my mom's home and it's start and it's changing the atmosphere in her home. Oh. Yeah. Well, as sons, we have the ability to, you know, we have everything that we need so we can ask for those things and then you know we can ask for them ourselves you know without the help of the angels but we can also you know i mean the angels are there why not just engage with them and invite them to come and help because i mean they're part of the kingdom let's use use them so and that's probably how the father is going to make you know Man, make these things manifest anyway is the angels so the more I think the more that we talk to them engage with them the more we're going to encounter them 
Yeah, I agree. And, and that's just something that we all need to be about doing is every step of the way, just engaging the angels that are around us and talking to them and working with them. And, you know, like I said before, you know, God is within us. So when we, when we are creating, you know, when we're, when we're thinking and we're kind of in that dream state of something we want or something we need, well, all we have to do is release the, I mean, that's, that's literally the mind of Christ. That's literally God, the father in you creating what it is that you, you you think that it's something that you're trying to think up and desire, but it's really the Father. And we, we kind of hindering from being able to, to to create those things because we don't believe that it's Him doing it. So I'm just inviting everyone here in the group to, to just begin to let go of that reserve that says, I can't create or I can't engage with the angels. I can't do this or that because God is within us. We, ha we have everything that we need to be revealed in the earth. So let's begin to be revealed in the earth of who we are and what we're here about. You know, if it's a new car you need, by all means, begin to engage with that. And, and thank Father for, for it being in your life today. And, and feel those emotions. Let those emotions come and just <laughs> run over you and fill you full of the joy and the praise that, you know, if your kids are sick, same thing. You know, you ask the Lord. And, and you just begin to declare that they're, they're made whole because you're the son that has everything you need. So the angels are bringing the medicine. The angels bringing the healing, whatever it may be. You know, I... I, I just heard Father say that he said it like this. You may not think of angelic assistance, but I do. Yep. That's the way it often operates in the kingdom. So our source is always him, right? Yes. Things come from him. Um, yeah. So where are we? Do, Bucky, do you see where we are in, in, in that throne room atmosphere? Or? I still think we're in the throne room atmosphere. Okay. And I, I think that's, that's part of what we're, I think that's where, where we're just supposed to hang out is in this, in this uh, I mean, y'all may want to go someplace. I don't know. We well, I, I almost feel like... Um, this is almost like um, Father is right now. We're we're in the throne with Him and the cherubim and all. But I feel like they they are speaking to us, almost like a a bit of a teaching or discussion regarding these things. Yeah. So yeah, I was wondering, uh, Mag, if Maggie had anything to share. You've been very quiet, Miss Maggie. Yeah, you know, I'm always um, holding and sharing and interacting, um, you know, with the Lord um, in different <laughs> places. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of like, okay, this is going on for um, Jen. This is going on with, you know, the group. And this is what I'm doing and engaging with the father. And then this is going on with angels. So I'm just kind of observing <laughs> and listening um, and writing down what I'm receiving because I'm actually, um, you know, kind of seeking some things for myself. Okay. Uh, I, you know, did, wasn't going to share or anything like that, but um, it's about, you um, what Bucky was talking about. And, um, you know, I've had lots of visitations with angels and with Jesus and, you know, in the natural conversations, when I say in the natural, I mean, physical, yeah. Um, and, yeah. you know, things like that. Um, you know, angels have come to change my tires and things like that. And <laughs> <the first one. laughs> I couldn't, <laughs> um, but for me, I mean, it, you know, it's so holy and otherworldly that, you know, I'm, I'm just kind of observing myself Yeah. <laughs> in, you know, this 
place of, you know, I'm believing it because I'm seeing it, but it's very, you know, mystical, I guess. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I, I have had conversations like with Michael um, and uh, the angel and um, some worker angels, like I said, to change my tires, do different things. So anyway, um, yeah, I, I really, <laughs> I mean, thank you for um, <laughs> inviting me to contribute, but uh, I didn't really feel like there was anything that I had to, to share. Well, you got plenty to share. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can quit holding back now. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm so used to holding a lot and sharing a lot, and you know, I can go. I'm in like maybe a dozen different streams at once a lot of times. So, you yeah. know, I just have to kind of say, well, Lord, you know, what do you want to say to this person or to this group? So, um, you know, if I would share just a couple of things, you know, I, it goes in a lot of different directions. So, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I try to follow and stay with the group when we're on tour, but I, <laughs> I do kind of, you know, go in different directions. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, um, Praise the Lord. Thank you for letting me share. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are, we are multidimensional, right? <laughs> yep. Yes. And we can be in many places at one time. Well, yeah, we are. <laughs> yes, we are. What am I saying? Yes, thank you, Bucky. <laughs> we are in many places at one time. Yeah. So yeah, don't don't ever hesitate. At least when I'm facilitating, I, I kind of expect you to engage with us and share with us because I mean that's what we're here for is to learn and to practice and to you know I don't have anything more than any anybody else. You know what I've gotten has been my lot in life, and what you get is your lot in life, and. I celebrate what you get just as much as I hope you celebrate what I get. And and so please don't don't feel like you're you know less than or anything like that. I I need you to be who I am. I I need each one of y'all to be who you are so that I can be who I am. And and uh, Amen. I, I, sometimes I don't like who who you are. And not anybody here in the particularly, but <laughs> you know, sometimes I'm sure others don't like me either. So <laughs> only no, momentarily, no. only momentarily. <laughs> so you know, it's all good, and we get past that kind of stuff, you know. But it's it's I think it's our duty to to, and that's one of the reasons why I come come out and I share stuff like this. I try to be really open about this stuff because it's not about me. It's just like that verse in Peter, you know, this, the things that I actually learned, I realized they're not for me alone, that they're for everyone who's coming after me or even some that's even before me, you know, that I have nothing without them. And so what I have, I freely give to everyone else and with encouragement to, to spur you on, to draw, draw out of you what it is that you carry. Because without you, mine is just a sounding gong, you know, because I need each and every one of you. Amen. So yeah, anybody else have a need that want to press into and see if we can see the emotion and see that happening. So we've got a couple, if nobody else does, I got a couple that's going on right now that I'm really pressing into and I'll, I'll be happy to let y'all help me with that if y'all, if y'all want to. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my wife and I are planning on retiring in the next five, six years at the most. And and uh, when we retire, we, we're buying some motorcycles and we're going to uh, start riding a lot. And 
Um, anyway, we don't have any motorcycles now. We don't even have licensed to ride motorcycles. <laughs> but we've got a plan in place where we're actually we're we're going to take some classes and learn, you know, everything we need to learn as best we can. We're already looking at some some motorcycles that are kind of inexpensive now so that we can use those to learn to ride for the next several years so that when we get where we can start touring more, we're going to, you know, we'll move up into something a little more um, advanced into that. And so I've really been engaging the Lord about that because it's, I don't think it's just a desire of my heart. I, I believe that it's actually the desire of the Father's heart that he's put on my heart. And so, you know, again, I just try every day to engage that and see myself riding riding our motorcycles that we're we're on a trip together we're we're having fun we're going places we've never been before we're encountering you know heaven even as we go riding through different places releasing the kingdom of god in those places engaging with new people you know just encountering life and enjoying what the lord has brought us to in our lives and uh so if anybody wants to engage with that, I'll be more than happy to just let you step right in and tell me what you see in that because I, I just want to add to my my picture, my the desire that's within me. Absolutely. Wow. Good. I'm and just seeing that that it, that it's being organized like it's like it's being shifted and organized in the heavenly realms right now and that that angels are coming with every step of the way everything needs to be done even through the classes i just sense they're just angelic involvement and um why I'm noticing these motorcycles and I'm seeing these tires they seem to be like glowing and full of uh, I don't know just um, something about the tires that seem to be glowing full of life and it's kind of like a very uh, connected so that there's uh, protection and um, I don't know, just something about the tires. I feel like you it's gonna the tires are able to take you more than than to than a normal road. Like they're able to take you into different areas in life and new realms. New realms. Um, yeah. I'm just seeing something really, really I'm digging it. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm loving it actually. <laughs> yeah. And, I just feel like too that there's something about the fuel and the the engines having such um, I don't know maybe just something that uh, a blessing of of something that's supernatural in the engine and the and the fuel so that that it's long lasting very little wear and tear but. Um, I don't know. I just see his very presence wow. and, and the angelic presence all around the engine. And uh, there's just something there. It, it's like more than just motorcycles. It's uh, it's an encounter yeah. with God. You know, this is, this is the one dream of my life that I've put on hold my entire life so that I, we could raise our children. You know, it's always been, since I was 14 years old, my sister and brother-in-law worked in, in the Harley shop here locally, and I spent the whole summer with them uh, hanging out at the Harley shop when I was 14. And and uh, I've wanted a bike all my life. And I've had a couple of bikes, but never never the one that I really wanted and never, never for very long. And... I always put it off because family came first, you know, rather than, than, you know, having something like that. And so all my kids are grown. All my kids are out. 
my grandkids are growing up and we're we're ready to you know embrace life and enjoy life and so and, and we're we're not just looking at motorcycles we're looking at indians we i i used to want harleys but we've kind of settled on indians that's good That's what my my father had when he was young. The, yeah. the Indian, yeah. So we we can move on from that if you want to, but it's just it's I just feel like that it's it's really and truly the Lord wants us to engage him with not I mean we get so caught up in, in trying to perform church stuff, everything that we do. We think it's got to be done through, you know, in, a, in like a, a, almost like in a church setting, you know, we, we want to, I think we need to break those sorts of habits and start engaging life as, as a, as a spirit being and learning to engage the world, not, not to be necessarily a part of the evil part of it. But God put us on this earth to learn how to to be human. In fact, you know, the, the one thing he's revealed to me recently that the one thing that he could not ever do ever is he could not enter into man until man was created. So he created you so that he could come and live with you in your life so that he could experience what you experience so that he can in, encounter what you encounter. He, he, he's not interested in you having a religious experience. He's experience, He wants to have a life experience with you. Mm, that's okay. You know, um, Bucky, um, what I saw, I just, you know, I, I just had it like a, an immediate quick vision when you, when you were talking about what you wanted to do. But I, um, I saw you on a bike um flying down a road but you had this you had on um dark sunglasses you know sort of the oval ones that wrap around your your head your your face you know uh -huh. you had that those on and you had this long um red scarf that uh was wrapped around you know wrapped around your neck and it was streaming out behind you <laughs> and and when Robert shared, I thought to myself, well, to me, that just says life, you know, even more life, because that was the feeling I got yeah. seeing you, you ride that bike. So, so yes, we release that, those things of, of, um, of Bucky's heart, Bucky and Lori, we release them to you, Father, we release them to the angels. Yeah. Bring those things to pass. And we thank you. Lucky, did you say that you um, drove trucks or something? I um, No, I, I, I drive a pickup. Okay. Um, yeah, when you were um, sharing about engaging with people, I mean, that just exploded in my spirit because that's, you know, my heart and the Father's heart is ministry. You know, I've been in ministry for over, you know, almost 40 years, I guess, 30 something years. So yeah. <laughs> um, since, since I was a kid, actually, I was just sharing with somebody about, um, you know, well, anyway, uh, evangelizing since a very young age. I mean, I, you know, did street preaching since a very young age. So I've just always, that's my heart. That's the Father's heart in me. So I see you doing that. I see you excited. Um, you and your wife about sharing uh, to truckers and RVers and hippies <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and really all walks of life, um, different people, and you just being free to do that and, you know, to share that. And I see uh, printed materials around you, like maybe you'll have little books or pamphlets or something, but things that you will actually give to people to read maybe books or things um, to kind of introduce them uh, so that, you know, people that you don't have time to visit with. But um, the other thing, so that was something that's delighting the father's heart as well as will bring you joy and excitement. Yeah. And, 
you'll feel really free to do that. So as you're talking about it, yeah, you know, that, that will be um, your future because you're writing it. And, and what the Lord showed me was, did you say you're from Texas also? Yeah, yeah. Okay, me too. So what the Lord has been showing me for like, you know, <laughs> several decades um, being in Texas are tacos. And the scripture is, I think it's um, Psalm 5.8, if I'm not mistaken, but it's about how he um, fills our delight and our desire and our life with good things. So he, whenever I'm praying with people or for myself, he'll show me a taco. <laughs> and inside of it, for you, he was showing me this taco shell, I should say, taco shell. And then there's all this gleaming light in there. And so what he said to me was, you know, right now you're in the place of picking toppings and filling it. Wow. You, know, you have your choice of meat. You have your choice of, you know, what kind of wheels you want. You have your choice of, you know, lettuce and vegetable, what kind of growth and what kind of, you know, all these things represent different things. But right yeah. now he wants to do that with you is fill that taco because right now it's all light inside which is what makes those toppings what is what makes the filling right. and that's what makes um your life you know like the scripture says because um those different words in that psalm uh he fills it with good things he fills your life and it also means desire uh, yeah. your delight it's all you know the same word in hebrew so right. yeah it's good so that's what i saw for you thank you and see for you. So yeah, um, the Lord's definitely not done, um, you know, with the ministry part of your life. Yeah, I don't think I would get out of that too easy. <laughs> I said yes once. <laughs> well, it's actually, you know, instead of retiring, refiring, but your latter days might be more in terms of um, manifestation and exploits than your former. Yeah, so I get you. Whatever, whatever you have done when you were your most active, if, if it's now or if it was before, it'll be 10x <laughs> or maybe even, you know, more than that uh, in, yeah. in the future. Like, like, yeah, I've been at this almost 40 years now. So, yeah, it's uh, been a long time. Thank you. I appreciate that. Sure. Yeah, I know you're you're one of the <laughs> you and I think Peter uh, also, but um, yeah, been been in ministry for a very long time. So yeah. So when you say feel less than for me, it's it's not that at all. It's about that I always have a lot, and I'm usually the one leading or ministering. So I like to sit back and you know, um, not not be I don't want to say responsible, but not be it not be necessary for me to share or give you know yeah, yeah. Um, so it's not that I'm hesitant or you know timid or anything like that at all <laughs> good, good. that's good well thanks for telling me that I, I was, hope I didn't wasn't trying to be offensive in any way that's just uh, yeah thank you yeah no I I, I appreciate that you were taking those things into consideration. I just wanted to let you know, you know, it wasn't that I was, it's just that I get so much and it's not like, you know, I mean, I really have to kind of filter and right. limit. <laughs> otherwise I'd be, you know, taking over the whole meeting. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that's not what I'm here for. I mean, I don't come to, to these meetings for that. I'm learning about, um, ascension and i mean i've been doing it for a couple of years but um this is different from what i am used to so yeah, um, yeah. yeah. but um, i am There's learning about oh, i'm sorry I, I just no, saying, I was learning. <laughs> you go first and then i'll go <laughs> no i don't really have anything to say <laughs> i'm just talking I, well, I was just going to say about manifestation the lord's been talking to me about this and i know that there's a lot of you know people that specialize in that and talk about it and experts. So it's kind of new to me. But the thing is, is that I, the, since I've been in prophetic ministry forever, 
I, I do have to get it directly from the Lord. I have to get it fresh. <laughs> so he's teaching me these things, just like you're talking about now, you know? So um, that's what makes it fun for, for me and interesting for me is that I don't, I'm not sitting under somebody who's teaching me. Right. Uh, you know, I'm getting it straight, you know, from the Lord and he's showing yeah. me these things. And, you know, he was showing me about entering into abundance and entering into manifestation. He's like, okay, you know, the church has some of this, but, you know, not really. And the new agers have some of it, but not really. And <laughs> let yeah. me show you what I have. <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of where I'm seated is at his feet. And then he'll show me, okay, this is what abundance looks like in my kingdom and in heaven. So um, anyway, I'll, I'll finish with that. Thank you. Oh, that's good. That's good. You know, I, I just, I really think that, that so many of us are, are, have just been, I don't know how to say it exactly, but we're, we're just, we desire so much from the Lord. And, and you're right, sometimes we do just get so much that it's hard to, it's hard to focus on one thing, but that's something the Lord's really been showing me in the last year or so is, is really learning how to focus on one thing. And, 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 uh, you know, I went through this, this, I don't, I don't know. When I, when I kind of came into this, to the mystical world, I was just like most everybody, you know, really, I thought I had a lot of really neat prophetic gifting and other giftings that were really, pretty powerful and and I, I was I used them a lot and anyway over the last couple of years though he's really kind of humbled me in that and and had me just to lay those things down and and let him be the one who shows shows me what he wants me to release instead of me just always having an answer in fact there for a while I took a, a little sabbatical for what six or eight months from yeah. this group when i when i came back i was just really blown away at how much me backing off and i you know it may not just been me backing off but when i when i stepped out of the way other people really came up into the place where god would have them you know and uh I, I just ever since then I've just really been trying to be real quiet and and listen more than than you know sharing as much. I really appreciate what you shared about that. Maggie, it was good. Thank you. Does anybody else have anything else we wanna press into tonight? No, I, um, as, as you guys were talking, I saw like a, um, it was uh, an angel. It, it, uh, it was manifesting as a whirlwind in the oh, throne. Yeah. So I was, you know, like it, it came from the right side and it, and it's, it, it kind of moved, moved towards us. And so I was just, uh, watching it and, uh, so I just I just wanted to share that because somebody may get uh, ha have something more on that. I um I've been battling um for a few years um, from a business I had um, some debts and. Um, there have been some breakthroughs, but there seems to be this just large lump sum that had been left over and um, been asking God and feeling, you know, and sensing God would encourage and, you know, speak to me about it. But, and, and he's given me some very practical wisdom and I've done those things, but it just seems like it's still there. And I'm just like, okay, God, what's going on? And the, all the encouragement, everything that God has been speaking about it, 
in about a week a week ago he spoke to me and he said um are you a hearer of my word or are you a doer of my word and i was like okay god what does that mean in this specific situation and and i felt like he was so starting to show me where he has been speaking to me about manifestation and and what he wants to do and and i've always felt like that this very specific situation was something that he was using to teach me and and to bring me into more of what he what he has for me and stuff but um as i was tonight i was just sitting there going god is there anything i need to bring up you know to release the angelic you know and this was what i felt like the lord told me to share was just to to say you know i want to to see and and release it i haven't really done that you know over this specific situation and and maybe this is part of where god has shown me you know bringing it from a hearing to doing you know uh uh, a real releasing of of what he has and partnering with him to allow that manifestation you know to happen so i i just wanted to see if you guys would engage ever that with me absolutely well, again um it's, it's just like we were saying before see it as though it's already happened and and mm-hmm. as if it's like happening right now and that it's just completely dissolving and and start to feel that emotion with it so it's it's a Joe Dis- Dispenza, Disp- did I say it right? Yeah, uh-huh. Anyway, yeah. he, he talks about it through science as being, he uses that verse, uh, uh, I can't remember the address of it, but the, the two becoming one, and it, what he says the two are is, is the desire and the emotion come together. So we have a desire that, that you get that debt paid for, and we just see the emotion. We experience that emotion that it's already done. So let's just engage that way and begin to just see that debt that it's just disappears. And whether he sends you the money, whether it just mysteriously just vanishes, whether, you know, whatever it may be. However it may be, we're not going to ask him how he's going to do it. We're not going to worry about how he's going to do it. We're just going to believe that it's already done. And began to thank him and be joyful about the way that it's already happened. Amen. That's yes. And um, uh, what I got on that was this, this whirlwind angel was, um, you know how in a whirlwind where it can pick things up and sort of break them apart and they're, they become mini particles, whatever. Yeah. And, and oh I God. saw that happen <laughs> with, the, with the debt. So yeah. it, it, it's sort of like, it, I heard the word disintegrate. Disintegrate. So. Yeah. Yeah, I see it. I see it. It's like literally the particles are, are separating from from setting on that shelf in the bank. Yeah. And it's just like pulling them up. They're coming up as dollar bills and they're disappearing as little black specks. Yeah. They're now part Mm. of the field. (laughs) They're moving into the field. Wow. I saw like melted wax. Like it was just dripping down from (laughs) amazing. It's dissolved. Exactly. I thought you said that it was a debt that was owed to you, or that was what I understood <laughs> you to say. So I saw in heaven these bands coming up. <laughs> yeah, that's Roger. what it is. What? It's a debt for him. Yeah, he's getting paid all that money. <laughs> yeah, that's what I understood to say and, um, or misheard. But uh, I see these bands coming off of these large stacks of cash. And I just, you know, whenever I see this in heaven, you know, it's that um, there's restitution and payback and, you know, justice. So that's what I saw. That's uh, good. <laughs> those bands were being loose and the father was, you know, um, or Jesus, you know, or I saw him. 
about taking those bands off the month of off the cash. So when you said cash bucket, it's like, yeah, that's exactly what I saw too. <laughs> wow. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, I'm just believing that you're going to get paid all that money back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, call it, you call it debt, but it, the Lord calls it, it's debted to you. Yeah. <laughs> wow. He flips it. Wow. He always so flips it. You just call in this cash, these amounts of money that are owed, maybe things that he doesn't even know about um, to bring those ledgers Yes. I just feel the glory all over me as I'm saying this. So <laughs> there's a lot that's due you um, that's going to be coming to you. And some of it, yeah, will be manifest with your salary increase, but there's going to be more than that coming. Absolutely. Uh, and this also, I saw this for Jin uh, before, like an envelope um, from heaven um, with like unexpected surprise uh, money for the vehicle or yeah. along with the vehicle. Yeah. Um, I saw that as well when um, we were engaging for her. But we call all of this in, Lord, all of our harvests, all of our um, you know, seeds that were sowed um, that we didn't claim or call in, Lord, we just receive it. We receive the payback. We receive restitution and recompense. Uh, the enemy, you know, thought he could hold on to these things, but um, he can't hold on to what is due us. And uh, we just claim it. I claim it for Jill and Bucky and uh, and his wife and um, uh, for Robert and um, Jen. I think that's yeah. <laughs> and yeah. yourself. And my, oh, yes, please. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> and Leon, why was Leon, Leon left? Yeah, you, he did. He, I thought he'd come back, but he did. Maybe he's having an internet outage. You know? Okay. Well, we're still including. Yeah. So. And Everyone's included, Lord. Thank to you. Whoever will uh, you just receive out of the stream of your abundance, Lord, because you have more than enough. You're Jehovah Jireh. You have more than enough to supply whatever is needed and then some. There's always more. So we just uh, open our hands. And it was Psalm 103.5, which I, I should have known. Uh, <laughs> he <laughs> feels, it satisfies our desire and our life with good things. Yeah. Um, and so we just receive it, Lord, because mm -hmm. money is a good yeah. thing. Um, recompense and justice and payback is a good thing. Yeah. And vehicles and motorcycles and trucks are good things. So we receive yeah. it. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You know, this, this is inheritance stuff, y'all. It's, it's, yeah. just, it's just stuff yeah. that we get because we're, we're children of the king, you know. And, you know, to hear Mike my, my Popovich talk about it, it's, it's like somebody wrote into him one day and says, wouldn't that be greedy, you know, to ask for like a car that I don't really need? And, and he's like, no, it's like, actually, that's kind of the way the kingdom works. The more you kind of get for yourself, the more that you're able to give out, you know, Yeah. because it's, it's, it's the opposite of what you think it is. So it's not being greedy. It's because everything's ours already. So we, we just, step into our to our place as sons engaging with the angelic engaging with all of heaven and we just call what's ours in yes because it is ours yes it is it's all here in those in the in the dots in the field that father has created that's it that's it you know, <laughs> not very scientific terms, but I think everybody follows me. <laughs> in, it's in kingdom. It's in kingdom terms. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Something that God spoke to me, and I just think it's just these little things sometimes that bring huge shifts for me. And one of the things that God was when. I was just listening and somebody started to read the scripture about, you know, how uh, that we're, that we are, uh, we, that we just hear the word, you know, 
instead of uh, doing the word, you know, hears of the word, so doers of the word. Yeah. And, you know, and I'm not saying just from like a written standpoint, you know, I'm thinking of the, the sound, the frequency, the, the, um, the message of his heart that he impresses upon us, you know, all that, all this uh, prophetic, but also just this, you know, continual flow of atmosphere of, of his revelation, his word, you know, and even his written word, but it's all just being pressed into us. And God has shown me for several times that I have wanted to like hear and hear, and I've been encouraged because I heard, and there were several areas where I felt like I was hearing God, but God was saying, okay, I'm not just going to be here and just tickle your ears anymore, Robert. I want you to do like what I've told you. Like, and, and it's not like, and when I say that, I don't mean like I'm in all this rebellion and I'm not doing what God is saying, but no. it's like, take it to a different level. Like yeah. take yeah. all this encouragement that you had and, in, and like release it or, you know, partner i saw it as partnering with god yeah like all of a sudden i just partnered with what he was saying and released it but i kept going okay god how do i go from hearing it to doing it and i've been asking that for the last week i've been saying god how do i hear it and then do it you know how do i go from being a hearer of the word to a, a doer of the word and i swear god spoke to my heart and said ask me to be the doer inside of you and I went, okay. You know, it was <laughs> like, like, like I, I've seen him as I am. I've seen him as the God who is love, you know, all these things were, or he was my hope. And I'd say, God, be the hope inside of me, be the love inside of me, be the I am inside of me, that I am what you're saying that I am, you know. But it was like this moment, I was like, I've never even thought about asking that. And I just said, okay, God be the one who, be the doer inside of me, uh, do inside of me, you know, like do the word inside of me, you know, and I was like, be that inside of me, and I just felt like something was released inside of me, and I feel like I'm stepping into a different realm, like I'm, I'm shifting from one realm to another of stepping from just hearing his word to doing it, and it's, and it's not just you know, I think we get too religious when we sit there and think about the word do. We think about, oh, we should do this, we should do that. No, it's like, it's literally infusing his life inside of us yes. Yes. To, to empower us to do what, what he's called us to do. And, and sometimes it's very prophetic. Like you might have a prophetic vision. You're like, why can't I fully step into it? And I, and I felt like, I just felt like a shift in the spirit, like God, like it was almost like God got stern with me and said, I don't want you to just hear it anymore. I want you to do it. Yep. And it was like, wow, wow. I mean, I felt a shift and it's just been huge for me to, to do that. But I felt important to share that right then. Wow. Well, yeah. to me, it goes back to what Bucky was, was sharing, that you see it, you envision it, you you um, feel it, you know, the emotion of it. You really set your heart and your intention on it. You remember when we first started talking about when we, when we were learning the ascension stuff, we learned how to frame things up. And it's the same sort of thing. You, when, you, when you get a desire, yes. you just begin to frame it up. And, and the more you think about it, the more it becomes completed, you know? Yeah. Yes. In the house. That's good. That's really good. But I, I, I'm really just sensing. I heard a guy say something and it was like he was saying it, but then it just like it made so much sense. He said, you know, a lot of times we hear in our mind what God's saying. But sometimes it has to get to our heart. And he said, what's between our heart? And he said, it's our vocal cords. And, and then the Lord spoke to me and he said, I am the, uh, oh, oh, what is it? Um, 
the high priest of your confession. And he wow. said, I want to redeem your confession. I want to redeem what you proclaim, you know, and, and he said, you're going from just being a hearer to a doer. Wow. And, wow. and I was like, wow, God, you know, but it was like when he said that, like, it's got to go from your brain to your heart. And he said, what's between your, you know, your brain and your heart. And it was like, oh my gosh, you know, it was like prophetic, you know, like the way he was saying it, but but then I heard God speak to me. He said, yeah, I am the high priest of your confession. I want to redeem. I want to sprinkle you with my blood and redeem your confession between what's, what's, you know, and it says out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks, you know, like he said, I want to redeem that part. Yeah. It's a, di it, it's a different perspective on that word. It's different really than um, like, you know, how, how we uh, interpreted it in Bible studies and in, you know, in, in, yes. in traditional <laughs> teachings. So, yeah, this yeah. is what, this is what father is doing. He is giving us another angle and it's like, of course, that's what you're talking about. I mean, I think his word, you, you can take, there are many layers to it. And so we're, we're starting to really open up and flip on those flip open those layers of his word absolutely <clears throat> excuse me i'm sorry um the scripture says <laughs> you know that um he watches over our word to perform it to accomplish it uh -huh. and, you know i've given this to a lot of people i mean a lot That's of people good. um over the years about how it's his performance because we do at the church, the religious church does get into uh, performance, you know, based, um, you know, service to the Lord. And it's not about our performance apart from him. We can do nothing, but we're not apart from him. He's in us. And so because no word of God is devoid of power, it has within it the power to accomplish. So it's really important that we act on those promptings, that we do obey, that we do respond and say, yes, Lord, and allow him him and release him into that situation into that um performance of a thing because he's watching over it and he wants us to engage with him in fulfilling it um yeah. he can't do it without us and you know we can't do it without him obviously so you know it, <laughs> it, it takes both of us we're joint heirs and, and co-laborers um in his uh in his field yeah anyway i'm preaching now so i'm gonna stop <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I need to be going. We we still got to go to the grocery store tonight. So, oh, for goodness' sakes, getting late. Yeah, so. yeah we just hit seven o'clock. So, yeah. Yeah, it's nine o'clock here. So I know it's late, Mister. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, I love you guys, and and we just thank you, Father, for sealing this ascension. We thank you that you've uh, given us good good wisdom tonight. That you shared some really good uh, hands-on ways to go about doing life with you. And we're just grateful for that, Father. We're grateful for everything that you share with us and everything that you, you, you teach us. And Father, I'm just so grateful for everyone being who they are in you. And as, as we grow together, Father, we share together. And as we share together, we continue to evolve into who you've created us to be and that's your children um, manifesting in the earth realm so we just thank you for that lord in jesus name we love you and we thank you and we praise you lord amen. yes amen amen